fun today. Actually, today we're going to be talking about jamming in G on the mandolin. And we're going to start at the very beginning. We're going to start with just the G major scale, and then we're going to work our way up to doing fun stuff like that. But it's all about actual jamming today. So I need you to grab your mandolins because you're going to be playing with me here in just a moment. And it's going to be a lot of fun. If you're a Gold Pick member here on the website, BanjoBenClark.com, you've got everything you need here. I've got three cool videos for you to watch, some tabs for you to download that G major scale. And if you're watching somewhere else, then I'd be honored to have you on board as a Gold Pick member. Let's jam. So today we're going to learn how to begin jamming with our mandolins. We're going to start in the key of G. And we're also going to start with our G major scale. And that's the only requirement that I would ask for you to have is to be familiar with the G major scale. If you are not, or you need a reminder, you can download the tab that I have just below and get that G major scale. We can get two octaves on the mandolin without having to move up the neck any. And those are the only notes that we're gonna work with today, those uh, seven notes that just repeat. Um, if you need more of an in-depth study, I have a G major scale study. It's an older video, but it's very, very thorough. And that's where we talk about what scales are and how we find them has tons of different exercises. But for now, <clears throat> we're just going to uh, start with that G major scale and we're gonna begin putting it with a guitar playing rhythm because that's what we need to do. Beyond the scale tab, we're not gonna work with any tab. We're gonna work with our ears today, which is what we, we eventually wanna do and it's good to start doing that either, even now. Let's review the notes of the G major scale. Our lowest note or our lowest string on the mandolin is a G note, so we start there. Then our second note, is the second fret, fourth fret, fifth fret, then we move up to the open D string, and then we follow the same pattern, second fret, fourth fret, fifth fret. As we go to the next strings, that would be a one octave scale. So we go to the next strings, our pattern changes just a little bit. It's open two, three, five, open two, three. So all together, if you wanna play along, Now here's the cool thing about that G major scale, is that those are all legal notes. Like if we're playing in the key of G, and most of the time in the key of G, the chords that are being played behind us are the G, C, and the D chords, sometimes an E minor, an A minor. Um, but if it's a normal song, if it's like 95% of our songs out there, all of those scales that we just learned, or all those scale notes, are good legal notes. What do I mean by that? I mean that none of them are gonna sound too bad. There are better choices than others, but Whenever we uh, play any of those notes over any chord that we hear in a song in G, it's gonna sound okay. And if we don't like the way that it sounds, we can just keep going. And it's like my banjo mentor, Alan Mundy says, he says, playing is like the stock market. You never lose unless you sell, you know? So if you just, you just keep it going, don't sell. Just keep going and, and you're still in the game, so to speak. Here's what I wanna start us doing today as we start to play. Let's take that lower G major scale. Just practice playing that along with Daniel playing us some rhythm. He's just going to play a regular G chord, but I want you to engage not only your fingers, I want you to engage your ears, and I want you to listen how all of these notes, all seven of these notes, sound just fine over a G major chord. Here we go, Daniel. One, two, ready, go. Let's do it again. Now, can we get down to the bottom? Here we go. Now, if you need to slow the video down, you can do that, but it won't take you long to get up to speed once you learn that little pattern down there. But I want you to hear that all of those notes sounded great over a G major chord. Now, there's certain notes of that scale that sound more at home over that chord. We'll learn more about that as we go but all of them sounded okay. Like none of them made you want to break the mandolin, right? So let's experiment a little bit more with that. Let's do the same thing on the mandolin, but this time I'm going to ask Daniel to do a one, four, and five chord. In the key of G, that's just a G, C, and D chord. And I want you to play along, but also don't forget about your ears. I want you to listen to how the notes sound with Daniel and hear um, how they sound great with the movement. Let's try it. One, two, ready, go. Now go to the C chord. Now go 
with a decorn. Back to the G. Doesn't that sound nice? It actually sounds like that we're making music. Even though we're just playing some basic 1-4-5 chords using a basic G major scale, we can hear that those are the building blocks of music. Now let's try something else before we go on. This is a, an interactive exercise. Daniel's going to play the exact same chord progression that he just played. We're going to stay with the same notes that we've just played there. But this time we're going to begin to randomize them. We don't have to play them in a row. We don't have to play them directly up or down. We can if you want to. If you want to stick with what you've been doing, that's fine. But here's where the improvisation and the jamming begins to come in is we can take any of those seven notes and we can play them in any order that we want. And you don't have to play on every beat. You can hold it out over multiple beats if you want, but I encourage you to try. I'll give you an example, and then I'll trade off with you a few times and let you start trying. Ready? Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Now just choose from those notes. Go. Now I'll try it again. If you're first starting, a lot of your brain power is going to be taken up by trying to remember, well, what are my G major scale notes? But if you'll remember on that low octave, we've got our open string, our second fret, our fourth fret, and our fifth fret. Those are the only notes for us to choose from for now. And if we keep that in mind, we can start getting a habit of jumping back and forth. So if you need to rewind that video, I encourage you to do that. Practice going up and down the scale successively. And then just practice getting more comfortable with jumping to various scale notes. And if you detect yourself developing a pattern, then the next time you do it, try to break that pattern. Try to do something different. Because we're, we're, we're forging new pathways here in the brain. And this is a great way to do it. Okay, let's take our next octave scale. Let's make sure our mandolins are in tune. And if we take our next octave scale, that's one that starts right here. And it goes all the way up through this note. Those are the same notes as down below. We just start an octave higher. Once we get up to that note, the scale of course keeps going. But we'll just stay down in this home position that we might call it. But even then we can jump up and grab this note on the fifth fret. That's part of the G major scale. So our available notes Let's try it first though, just getting Daniel to play a good old G chord. Let's just try going up and down our G major scale. One, two, ready, go. Now keep it going, Daniel. Y'all do it now. Switch the chord, position, uh, chord progression to go um, what we call 11, 44, 55, 11. 
And that's just two measures of the one chord, two measures of the four, two measures of the five, two measures of the one. This time let's play around with those second octave uh, scale notes and randomize them like we did before. We'll just trade off a couple times. Let's try. One, two, ready, go. some half notes here and there. Now you try. First time you try it, it might be a little overwhelming, but as you keep doing it, you'll get better and better at it. I would say to try doing that 50 times. And what you'll do is you'll get over the hump of trying to remember where your notes are on the fretboard that you're needing to play. That pattern will become automatic for you. Those stepping stones, I kind of look at those frets as like, you know, if you're trying to cross a creek and you've got exposed stones that you know you can jump on and make it across the street or across the creek, that's what those are. Those are notes that you know are safe to be on. So after a while, it gets to where those become more natural when you're in the key of G. And then you can start to pay attention to making sounds and making combinations of notes that you want to, uh, to, to make it sound pretty. Now in the next video, we're going to call that one playing with a purpose because I'm going to add an objective to what we're trying to do. We're gonna keep doing the same thing, but I've got target notes that I want you to try and hit. Let's take a look.